welcome to the Individual in Society. Today on our program we'll be looking at children with disabilities. Earlier this week, Prime Minister Julia Gillard was brought to tears in Parliament while introducing legislation to help fund the National Disability Insurance Scheme. There will be launches, not trials. Permanent care, not temporary help. Disability care starts in seven weeks' time and there will be no turning back. I commend this bill to the House. In the lead up to launching Disability Care Australia from July this year, the Australian Government has secured a strong stable funding to support the rollout of the full national scheme. The 2013-2014 budget will invest $14.3 billion over seven years to roll out the National Disability Insurance Scheme across the whole country meaning that around 90% of Australians will be covered by Disability Care Australia by July 2019. Once the scheme is fully rolled out, it will provide support for around 460,000 people who have a significant and permanent disability that affects their communication, mobility, self-care or self-management. Some of the major funding of the NDIS that will benefit children with disabilities are helping to pay for carers to give parents of children with disability a break, assisting costs for new wheelchairs tailored to individual needs, funding home modifications to help people with a disability move around easier, and funding early intervention services to children like physiotherapy and speech pathology. This scheme provided a new level of hope for families impacted by disability. With this renewed attention, our team took to the streets to see what the public knowledge of this topic was. And people with mental disabilities too? Um, mentally unable to do something? Um, something that impairs your ability to do everyday problems. My definition of a disability is someone who has a mental or physical impairment which prevents normal function. Um, it's when people are not able to do the things that most of us are able to do, but it can take on many, many so it's anything that puts you at a disadvantage to, to the love of people. Uh, I guess it's um, not being lucky enough to be able to do what most of us can do and um, having to need support from somebody else where most of us are independent from that. Um, unable to do specific activities of daily life. So how would you define disability? Disability is a physical impairment which would, um, I guess, hinder someone from being able to live out life with a relative. Yeah. What she said. The Australian National Macquarie Encyclopedic Dictionary defines disability as lack of competent power, strength, or physical or mental ability, or a particular physical or mental weakness or incapacity. In Australia, over 296,000 children have a disability, which is around 7% of the population. Within this group, over half of the children have disabilities that are considered profound or severe, and 18% have moderate or mild disabilities. It appears that disability rates tend to increase with age, and boys are almost twice as likely to have a disability when compared to girls their age. Amongst this group, the most common types of disabilities are mental or behavioural disorders, with these affecting three in five children. Autism is a type of behavioural disorder and is said to affect one in eight children that have a disability. This statistic has increased by 6% since 2003. Physical and sensory disabilities are also high amongst children, and these include disorders such as Down syndrome and sensory impairments such as blindness. Autism is a spectrum of disorders that can differ in characteristics and severity. The precise cause of autism is not known, however it is thought to be caused by abnormalities in the structure or function of the child's brain. It can be characterised by difficulty with communication and social interaction as well as restricted and repetitive behaviours. 
As a child growing up with autism, it can be very difficult and frustrating as they often don't understand what is happening around them. They are not able to predict what is going to happen and can therefore be left feeling anxious and insecure. Frustration often builds up and this can result in aggressive behaviours and isolation. Down syndrome is a mental and physical disorder that is caused by a chromosomal error at con contraception. The child often receives an extra chromosome and this extra genetic material causes the physical features and developmental delays. Physically, children with Down syndrome are often smaller than their peers and have low muscle tone. They can be characterised by an upward slant to the eyes, a flat facial profile and a protruding tongue. Depending on the level of severity, most children with Down syndrome can lead a relatively normal life. Speech and self-care tasks will develop slower as well as learning and developing skills. Vision loss can be defined as total blindness, legal blindness and low vision, which cannot be corrected with the use of glasses. A person is considered legally blind when they have 10% or less vision. Many eye syndromes can affect children. Some of these include refractive errors, infantile cataracts, congenital glaucoma and genetic or metabolic diseases of the eye. After covering the main facts about some of the more prevalent disabilities in children, we now move our focus to the impact on the child and their family. Living with a child with a disability can have a profound effect on not only the individual, but the family as well. The impacts affect all aspects of a family, including the physical and emotional demands it places on the family members, the out-of-pocket costs spent on medical care and other care services, the difficulty which comes with finding affordable and suitable childcare, the other children in the family may become resentful due to receiving less attention and the feelings which may surround the parents such as guilt, blame and low self-esteem. These prospective effects all combine to potentially implement negative repercussions on the parents' relationship, their living condition and arrangements, family structure and outside family relationships. Along with relationship stress, parents may find it difficult to allocate time and financial resources to both their child with a disability and their other children. Parenting method and both short and long-term contributions to the household and family development. Aside from the negative effects, there are quite a few positive effects a child with a disability can have on their family. Firstly, it helps to enhance family unity increase the individual family member's awareness to their own strengths and provides a strong base of support and a large connection base within the community. All of these factors have a large impact on the health and well-being of not only the child but also of the family and the extended family. Now we actually have a letter here from a lady who wrote in to us. Uh, she experienced some difficulty when out shopping with her child who suffers from autism and here's how her story turned out. I wanted to say thanks to Carl, the young man on Register 7 at Westlake's Coles today in South Australia. My daughter, who is five, has serious medical conditions and disabilities. She has a brain injury caused by a stroke and also has autism. The shop was very busy and I very rarely take her out. The stares, comments and sniggers can make a trip for milk horrible with a toddler in tow also. Today there was such a long line. There was so much noise and Ella started to panic. People just looked as she screamed and made a commotion while I tried to load my groceries onto the register. Carl took one look at Ella, held her hand gently and gave her the biggest smile. He stopped serving at the line and helped her to focus and told her she was beautiful. He then, even though her language isn't clear, treated her like a normal child, chatted to her, smiled with her and made her feel as special as she deserves to feel. He ignored the looks of people around and just served us and never stopped smiling at Ella the whole time. I was so moved by his genuine level of care and compassion. He said all the right things and we all left with a smile. Thank you, Carl, for being such an amazing young bloke, for restoring my faith in strangers and for helping a little girl who wasn't being naughty, but simply her world was way too confusing, noisy and confronting for her to cope. And thank you, Coles, for employing this young man who made getting milk not the stressful experience it normally is. There are many schools located around Australia suited for children with disabilities. St Patrick's Special School Dulwich is a co-educational school for kids aged 5 to 20 catering for students with special needs. The occupational therapist from the school, Kylie, explains how disability is defined in her profession and the impact on the family. So how would you define a disability? So I 
Defining the word disability, I think, is a really um, challenging thing to do because it um, means so much to um, within society, and, and the term itself, I think, has so many ideas behind it. And quite often, it is labelled as something that a student or a person is not able to do in terms of a functioning or typically developing child. So, in that sense, at school, we don't tend to use it a lot, and we tend to refer to what students can do and their ability and what their strengths and what their um, likes are. Um, so, yeah, it's something that, that I think differs so much between um, diagnosis as well, I think, because we have such a range of um, diagnoses here at school as well. The term disability doesn't really ever fit just one student. So, so what are some of the main impacts on the families of, of disabled children? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the families here um, already come to school um, aware of the diagnosis, but I know from previous work that, that um, the initial understanding and coping and coming to terms with a diagnosis is really difficult. So it's the, um, it, it can be a really difficult and emotional time for um, parents and families understanding exactly what that diagnosis of that child means, how it's going to impact their development, um, understanding how that might be different to their preconceived ideas of that child, um, what it means for them functioning in society, what it means being at school, socialising and so on. It also um, can impact, I think, um, on daily outings. Um, things like going to the shops might become a lot harder, especially a lot of the um, difficulties that some students have in terms of their sensory processing, in terms of um, visual stimuli, and you know, being in different environments in large areas can be a different thing, and crowds. So I think there's a lot of um, areas that families have to consider. Um, and that might be emotionally challenging at times. Aside from the effects that children with disabilities can have on a family, we also need to consider the most important person, the individual. This is Carly's story. I am an autistic girl who has learned how to spell and can tell people to stop looking at me like I am helpless. I am cute, funny, and like to have fun. Carly is a child who is suffering from autism and has been dismissed as mentally impaired her whole life. However, three years ago, she made an extraordinary breakthrough in regards to her disease. Carly began to type on a computer and unlock the mysteries behind her behaviour, such as banging her head. Because if I don't, it feels like my body is going to explode. It's just like when you shake a can of Coke. If I could stop it, I would, but it's not like turning a switch off. I know what is right and wrong, but it's like I have a fight with my brain over it. Carly was not shy about her frustrations as she communicated her wishes of wanting to attend a normal school with normal children. I want to be able to go to school with normal kids, but not have them getting upset or scared if I hit a table or scream. I want something that will put out the fire. She was very clear on the fact that she sees herself as a normal child who loves to do the same things girls her age are interested in doing, such as going to the mall and chatting with boys. She knows what is right and wrong, but is locked in a body that does things she has no control over. When Carly gets impulses to do something she knows is wrong, such as emptying all the drawers in her room, she slaps herself in order to control her urges. Carly's family have learnt ways to keep her impulses in check, such as swimming, calming music and even yoga. It's Dear Dad, I love when you read to me, and I love that you believe in me. I know I'm not the easiest kid in the world. Give me a kiss. However, you are always there for me, me holding kiss. my hand and picking me up. I love you. Okay. I'll go through many sleepless nights to hear that. I'll spend every penny we have to hear that. Was there one writing in particular that left a lump in your throat? In this writing where she says, you've never been in my body, I wish for one day you could be in my body. A year after we first met Carly, she is happier, calmer, more independent. Come on, let's get this in the, pan. in the pan. She's even writing a novel. I think that humankind is just oblivious to things that have been around for many years. She also has her own internet blog and Twitters regularly, answering questions from people all over North America. 
I think Carly knows that she now has a voice that can help other kids. Now she looks at herself as someone who can make a mark on the world. And that's got to be life-changing. What do you hope for Carly now? I want her to be happy. I want her to have dreams and goals and accomplish those goals in spite of her challenges. I think the only thing I can say is don't give up. Your inner voice will find its way out. Mine did. The impact on the individual and family can be reduced through support services. For more information on this, we're going to cross live now to our special guest, Casey Hutchinson, who will talk about her role as an advertising ambassador for children with disabilities. Hello, Casey. How are you today? Hello, Taylor. I'm great, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Now, what is your role as the advertising ambassador representing children with disabilities? Well, that is a good question, Taylor. Um, as an advertising ambassador, I aim to enlighten the community on the stresses that family and children go through when they're faced with the heartbreaking reports of newly found disabilities every year. I represent many different services that are offered to help and ease the tra um, transition or act as a continual support network for these children. What kinds of services are offered to families needing assistance? Well, majority of the services offered are non-for-profit organisations that are, to an extent, funded by government bodies. Um, in saying that, most of the organisations are heavily reliant upon fundraising as well to meet the ever-increasing demand and need for services. For instance, Autism SA is an organisation that was formed in 1964. To, this was formed to help relieve the pressure placed upon parents when a child is diagnosed with autism. They host early intervention sessions and development workshops which enable parents to adjust their daily lives and learn new skills and strategies to better understand the disorder and help better co connect with their child. So how are these services implemented? Autism SA um, aims at an early development program which involves a multidisciplinary team offering therapy and education services to the client with autism in conjunction with their families. Um, the team is made up of many different professions which include people like consultant teachers, speech pathologists, occupational therapists and early intervention consultants. There's quite a diverse range of people assisting in making these services possible and now you might see the importance of service like this to parents and children alike. You mentioned earlier that you represent many different services. What other services might you represent? Yeah, so Autism SA is only one service available. Another local service of similar structure is a relatively new one called Rocket. I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but there was a few, a few months ago there was a report on Today Tonight on it. It sounds familiar, but can you please tell me more about this organisation? It is quite remarkable how this organisation was founded. It is still a new service as, as it has only been in place for two years. Uh, there has been therapy based around the principles of behavioural analysis, which has evidently had astonishing effects on these children. Uh, this organisation broke through into the limelight when one of the children who had been undergoing this form of intervention full time for two years later was cleared of the diagnosis of autism and currently attends a mainstream school. Are cases like this rare in autism? Well, with this new program that Rocket has introduced, they are finding more and more people are seeing a successful outcome and as a result of the intensive early behavioural in intervention offered. This is truly amazing how organisations such as Rocket can be that step closer to finding a miracle cure. Well Taylor, as researchers told us, there is no set cure, but so far this is the closest thing we have come to it. And any parent will tell you that witnessing these stories restores hope for families who are in need of extra reassurance. So aside from autism, do you promote services in different fields of disabilities? Of course, there are places like SCOZA which provide services and support for people with disabilities ranging from all age groups including children. This program is inspiring as it promotes individual choice, community inclusions and meaningful participation for those with disabilities. They are committed to enhancing social and life skills which are fundamental for living independently and these skills are being taught at a young age to be carried all the way through life. There is another one that I also represent called Novita, which is another excellent organisation that is specifically aimed at helping children with disabilities. This is targeted more towards children that have physical impairments and acquired brain injuries. This is really the gateway to providing numerous services that are much needed in the earlier years of life, such as equipment, the monitoring programs they have, home interaction programs and much more. Um, and the Government of South Australia is also supportive of country services for children with disability 
Uh, there is information sites dedicated to relaying much needed information of services in those areas. This includes some of the assistance for isolated children scheme. This is a much needed scheme, but we don't have enough time to bring that one up. Could be here for a while. Well, I hope our viewers out there are more aware of what services are available. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, Casey. No, thank you, Taylor, for having me on your show. Now, that is all we have time for tonight. For further information and more details from tonight's show, including Rocket's clip from Today Tonight and other disability service, there will be information on our website after this show. Thanks for joining us tonight and tune in next week for the ever controversial topic of breastfeeding. And remember, you have an impact on society as the individual.